everyone, Ben Nelson, the Everyday Real Estate Investor here. Hope you are having a great week so far. Uh, if you're listening to this when it first comes out, it's early in the week. So I uh, hope you're setting yourself up for success uh, in your upcoming week. Uh, but no matter when you're listening to this, hope your week is going well and uh, you're taking the steps you need to to have success in real estate and in life. And that's what we're about here is uh, having success in both areas because being a high level real estate investor or whatever level you want to be in real estate investing, uh, it doesn't really mean much if you're not successful in the other areas of your life. So that being said, we are going to talk about real estate and success in real estate today. Uh, first of all, I I, uh, I don't want to, I guess I don't apologize, but uh, man, this has been one of those weeks uh, that has just been crazy and um, did a another TV shoot for the show that I'm part of, uh, The American Dream So on Monday. So that started off my week uh, just super busy and uh, it was really rainy and cold. And um, I think I uh, ended up catching something. So I've been kind of down and out for a big chunk of the week this week. And I don't know if you can hear it in my voice or not, but uh, but yeah, it's been kind of a rough week, week uh, busyness wise and, and health wise. So trying to rebound here, make sure I get um, a podcast episode and be consistent with that, uh, so that uh, you know we can we can keep this thing rolling and and get stuff out to to everybody, and we can continue to work on um, our success um, together and and helping each other do better. So. Um, with that, let's jump into it. This is probably going to be a little bit shorter one, just again, because of kind of the crazy and, and uh, down week health wise. Um, so, but I'm going to try to hit on the, the key points here and, uh, just give you five, five keys to success in real estate investing. And these definitely are not all of the keys to success. Um, there are a lot more that I can get into, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to hit on these and these are things that I think are great to think on and uh, continue to um, to hone in as you're getting better, whether you're starting out or just kind of trying to get better in your in your real estate investing uh, journey. So um, let's go. Let's let's make this. Let's go jump into this. So the first one is uh, to know your product. A lot of this is going to come down to to knowledge and just kind of and making sure you have clarity and the knowledge that you need to be successful. So first one is to know your product. Uh, if you don't know the product you're investing in, uh, that's where you make really, really big mistakes. And, and what I mean by that is uh, real estate in general, um, but also the niche that you're in, right? So everything is a little bit different um, and has its own nuances. You know, manufactured homes, uh, where, where I started are very different than single family homes, which are very different than uh, commercial properties and retail and office and all of that. Right. So um, and then, you know, multifamily, all, all those have their own nuances that you need to know. Um, and and whenever you're starting out or shifting into another segment, um, that's when you have to you have to learn and grow and make sure you understand your product, uh, so you don't make mistakes, uh, make assumptions that you that you're you know making from wherever you came from in the first place, whatever niche you were already working in, because um, things again are very different. So, and and if you don't have that knowledge, bringing someone on that has that knowledge and can add to your team. Um, and I and I this is something that I've experienced firsthand. I've talked about this in multiple past episodes where. I made this mistake where, you know, I jumped into a, a commercial building before I really had that experience and uh, it bit me and we lost a big chunk of money. Um, and all I had to do was uh, vet it with someone else that had experience in that space. Um, you know, I could have talked to another agent. I could have talked to an appraiser. I could have talked to a number of people, but um, the deal was easy to put together. Um, and so I, I kind of just, shortcut that stuff and and uh thought i'd figure it out uh, along the way and i i messed up and so that's that's the kind of stuff that you run into when you don't know your product um is you uh, you make those mistakes so know your product big mistakes come when you don't know what you're investing in so make sure that doesn't happen if you're wanting to transition or jump into something that you're not super familiar with um, that's okay just uh, make sure that you have someone on your team that can um add to that knowledge base so that you're, uh, you have that feedback and, and can make, and it may be a partner. It may be, um, 
it may be just some cons a consultant it may be a real estate broker it, it could that could be in many different forms uh, but just make sure you're getting counsel in some way um, whenever you're, you're shifting over to something that you maybe don't know as well okay next one is know your market um, just like with product market uh, different markets have their own nuances so you know, the Portland market here in Oregon is very different than the Nashville market, which is very different than the Los Angeles market and so on and so forth. And there are opportunities and pitfalls within each of those. And, and they all have different drivers and uh, different things going on, different things you have to be um, aware of, uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, there's different cities have different you know, lines that you have to be, you know, you, this block is, is fine. And then the next block is not. And um, so if you don't know those things and the, and you don't know what's going on in the market and you don't know what the drivers are uh, and you don't know where the market is headed, both from kind of a macro, you know, macro market level to those street by street nuances, um, that's when you're going to make mistakes as well. So um, again, this comes down to uh, knowing the market yourself and then having a great team to help guide you in those things. So um, don't just buy something because it's cheap. Don't just buy something because, you know, you think the numbers work. Uh, make sure you really vet those those deals in the area and that you know where your market is headed. Um, and this is where you um, not only can avoid mistakes, but you can also do a lot better in your portfolio and your investing because, if you know a market and you know what areas are hot and, you know, again, both from a, you know, higher level uh, metro area market and neighborhoods, um, that's when you can really start to uh, focus and hone in on areas that are doing better and that are going to increase your returns. So you're not just, you know, you're, you're not even, you're not necessarily subject to the quote unquote average returns. You can increase your returns by investing in those uh, emerging markets, emerging neighborhoods. Uh, so knowing your market is is key for sure. Um, okay, next one is know your numbers. Uh, knowing your numbers is the difference between making a deal work and a deal failing. It's, it's one of the biggest differences. And this comes down to market value, cap rates, uh, rents, um, how much is it, you know, remodel costs, uh, all of that is super important to know. And if you are guessing, that's when you make mistakes. And and I know that a lot of people do it. Um, I know that I have done it, you know, in the past where, you know, it's, you think you know how much something costs to remodel and then you get into it and um, you you figure out you're wrong. So uh, you don't want to go about it that way. You, you want to make sure uh, you are getting bids for your remodel. You are talking to legitimate contractors, um, bringing them through your remodel um, or your value add project. Uh, you want to be talking to property managers and knowing where um, where rents are at and where they're heading in the area that you're looking at. And, and again, every neighborhood's different, right? So you could have, I mean, you look at, I look at the Portland metro area, um, all the time. And there's pockets that have gone up 20, 25% in rent annually. And there's pockets that have lost, um, it, you know, and we're still in the same metro area. So, you you know, you can't just take a metro area average market. You have to look at the submarkets and really know what's going on in that submarket for the numbers. And are rents growing or are they shrinking? What is inventory doing in that area? You know, there's a couple pockets that not only have rents uh, gone down over the last year, but there's a huge amount of supply um, going in in that sec in that segment of the market, that that um, neighborhood. Um, so you've got a, a glut of inventory coming online when the rents have already started to decrease. That's an area to avoid, right? So you're going to just continue to probably see decline over the over the short term in that. Um, so you know, knowing your numbers super key. Uh, make sure you're you're double checking yourself and and vetting those numbers with people that know what they're looking at and you're not just plugging numbers in. Um, so you, again, your team, your property manager, your contractors, um, all of those people are going to help you dial in your 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 real estate brokers, right? For for value, uh, help you dial in those numbers, make sure you're using the right numbers, make sure you're, you're not being um, overly aggressive. You don't want to be too cautious where you're not getting deals uh, because you're being, you know, overly cautious, but you also don't want to be overly aggressive 
um, and make deals look like they're going to work when they're not. You know, it's really easy when you're in a spreadsheet to just, you know, oh, this deal doesn't work, but how can I make it work? Right. Well, you don't want to do that. You start going down that road. That's how you're, you create a deal that doesn't actually pencil. Um, but yeah, you, you know, you manipulated the numbers enough to make it look like it works. So don't, don't do that. Don't, don't get in your calculator and start punching numbers until the deal works. Um, make sure it actually works and you're not just forcing it, forcing something that's not actually there. Um, okay. Next one is know your strategy. And I talk about this a lot as well. Um, a lot of people, um, get into real estate investing and they just start buying real estate and, uh, and they don't really think about strategy. And, and I will say buying real estate is better than not buying real estate, but, um, without a strategy in place, uh, you're just not going to be as effective, you know, without clarity in your strategy, everything. And the other thing is, is, uh, it's really hard to find a deal if you don't really know what you're looking for. Okay. What's your strategy? What are the numbers you're trying to hit? Um, are you buying and rehabbing and renting and then refinancing? Are you flipping? I mean, those are high level strategies, right? It's not really super detailed, but just, um, you know, what kind of numbers do you want for return? Um, are you short term or long term? Uh, those details are super important because without it, um, everything looks like a deal or nothing looks like a deal. And you're, you know, you can find yourself stuck in analysis paralysis because you don't really have clarity on what, what it is you're after. So knowing your strategy and knowing how to implement that strategy, not just, you know, what, what that looks like, but how to implement it, um, and having the pieces in place to be able to do that. Super, super important. Um, so without that, you don't know what you're looking for. It's going to be really hard to find. It's hard to find something that you don't even know what it is you're looking for, right? Um, okay. And then last one here is making all those things work, which is having an excellent team. Um, your team is where the rubber hits the road. That's where the execution of your investment strategy comes into play. All the spreadsheets, all the numbers, everything can look perfect. It could look like a home run, but without a good team to help you run the project, do the rehab, uh, you know, get it rented out, um, manage the tenants, all of those things, sell it. If you're trying to, if you're doing something that's short term and, and you're flipping it, um, without the right team, uh, you're gonna, you're not going to be as successful and maybe you'll still make money. Uh, but you're, you're not going to make as much as you could have. Uh, and, and very likely, I mean, it's very possible that, um, a poor team, uh, is going to, it's going to cost you money and you could potentially lose money. Um, so don't go cheap on your team because your team is, that's who implements your investment strategy. You're the quarterback, right? You're the one telling everybody what needs to happen. Here's my plan. Here's the play we're going to run. Um, but you need that team to help you actually execute that and, uh, and make it happen. So um, don't, don't cheap out on this. It's really easy to say, well, this property manager will do it for less, or this real estate broker will, you know, they're a discount broker. They charge me less money. Um, you know, this contractor came in with a bid that's, you know, 50% less than this other contractor. Well, there may be reasons for that. And, and I'm not saying that you can't go with someone that is maybe a little bit less, but don't, don't, have that be the reason. If that's the reason you're going with them and that's the only reason you're going with them, that is the wrong reason. Um, if they happen to be a little bit less and you vet them and they're an excellent contractor or property manager or whatever their role is on your team, that's fine. You know, you don't have to go with the most expensive person either, right? Uh, but you don't want to pick someone just because they cost less money. Um, again, don't think of it as a, as a, uh, as an expense, as a cost. Yes, it's that, but you got to flip that in your mind. And remember, this is, you're compensating your team well to make sure that they are taking good care of your investment and, and executing that plan that you have. So it's not just an expense, it's an investment into your investment. And they're going to help you put that thing together and, and make it run. And I, I, I know this from experience for myself and from watching other people, you start picking you know, the cheapest bids on your, on your project or, um, the cheapest professionals, you know, as your attorney or your broker or whoever, um, and the, it doesn't end up being cheaper. It, in fact, it can end up costing you a whole lot more, um, uh, not pricing it right because, you know, your real estate broker is not, um, you know, maybe the best one that you can pick, not, uh, not 
uh, having your contractor not account for things that maybe they should have, you know, maybe they missed something in their bid and now you got to pay for it later, right? With a change order, um, or they're just slower or they're just not as high quality uh, of work. All, you know, there's a lot of things in there that you got to consider. And so it very much and very quickly can cost you more money by trying to go cheap upfront with the cheapest bid and the cheapest, the cheapest price. So look for value, not just cost. Um, and it's going to, it's going to be better for you. So, okay. Uh, again, I know this one was, uh, was, was shorter. I told you at the beginning, uh, why that is. And so a, a little bit of grace, uh, is awesome for, I appreciate you guys. Um, but, uh, hopefully this was still helpful to you. Um, five keys to success in real estate. Um, I want you to consider all these things, make sure that you are, are looking at all of these aspects of your business so you can be as successful as possible. So, uh, know your product know it well, know your market, know your numbers, know your strategy, have clarity there, and make sure that you have an excellent team to help you execute your investment strategy. Uh, thanks for listening in again. Uh, we'll catch you next time and be, make, make sure you tune in. I'm, I've got some great guests that I'm working on lining up. Um, I know, again, I've been uh, monologuing, monologuing here quite a bit. Uh, so thanks for your patience on that. But uh, looking forward to have some awesome guests uh, back on the podcast and continuing to share their experience, their journey, um, so it can help you and yours as well. Thanks again for listening. Make it a great rest of the day.